Hello once again from Carrollton, Texas. This is Cruise Man out on the 2018 Goldwing. And it's a beautiful sunny day here in Carrollton. As always, it's a little breezy. We always have that wind, seems like. This is a windy year. But it's a nice morning to get out for a little ride and have a chance to talk to you guys. I'm testing yet another moto vlogging audio setup. I the last video I did, I got some people complaining that the sound was only coming out of one channel on the left side or the right side. I can't remember which. I think it was the left side. And it was my fault. I forgot to go into Final Cut Pro and check the audio channels. I could have actually resolved the issue, but I didn't even realize that the microphone, the lavalier microphone I was using, was a mono microphone. So this last week, I purchased a new stereo microphone that I'm testing out now. And I read a lot of reviews, I checked Amazon, and I found this little microphone, a little lavalier microphone called a Purple Panda. So I'm testing the Purple Panda stereo microphone with the GoPro Hero 4. Now, what's nice about this little microphone, if it works, and you have to tell me in the comments below whether you think the sound is good or not, but what's nice about this little microphone, not only does it get good reviews, but it comes with all kinds of accessories. It actually comes with a GoPro connector. Uh, it comes with a couple of other adapters, both uh, all three and a half millimeter plug adapters. And um, so we'll see how it works. Hopefully it uh, will be my new uh, microphone. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm using the Cardo uh, Bluetooth headset, the Pack Talk Bold, and the Cardo headset does not have any way to communicate with the GoPro via Bluetooth. Now the Cena 20S does. I have the little Cena backpack, and you can use Bluetooth to uh, record audio. So instead of using Bluetooth, I'm just plugging a microphone directly into the GoPro and see how this turns out. A lot of stuff happening on the YouTube channel, a lot of stuff happening at Cruise Man's Garage. Um, planning some interesting things for the July 4th holiday. If you're a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing rider, you might want to go uh, register for my emails because I'll be sending out a special email uh, to those of you who have the uh, previous version Goldwing. But a lot of good stuff happening. I put out a video recently on the 10 things that I love about this new 2018 Honda Goldwing. I thought it was only fair uh, because I had previously put out a video of the 10 things that I felt like Honda needed to fix on this 2018 Goldwing. And so I thought it was only fair to balance it out and talk about the 10 things that I picked out that I really do love about the bike. And it is a great bike. I'm really enjoying it. I really love the size of it. I love the way it handles. There's a lot to love about it. And you'll, if you watch that video, you'll hear my point of view. Somebody pointed out that I didn't mention the brakes. And uh, I guess that would have to be number 11 because the brakes on this bike are really incredible. It has excellent uh, ABS brakes. Thing stops on a dime. Also, this week, I tested, uh, just a couple of days ago, I tested out my Rivco trailer hitch. I was able to hook up my Bushtech Quantum GL. I think it's a Quantum GL Sport, I'm not sure. Anyway, I hooked it up and just did a little ride around town, maybe 10 miles, not very much. I just wanted to kind of get a feel for how this trailer pulls behind this 2018 Goldwing. And uh, it pulls fine. I, uh, uh, of course, the trailer is Bush Tech, so it tracks great. It's you know excellent trailer. And um, I did learn a couple of things though. And that first thing I learned is it really sucks down the gas mileage around town. Now I haven't tested it on the highway, so I'm not sure if pulling the trailer is going to affect the highway mileage as much. But I went from about just in the 10 miles I was going by the computer on the uh, on the dashboard 
I went from about 43 and a half miles per gallon down to about 39 miles per gallon. So we'll have to see uh, how that really affects mileage long term. Uh, another thing I learned is econ mode is not really good when you're pulling a trailer. There just isn't enough power really. You really notice it uh, if you're running econ mode that you're pulling a trailer. So I drove the bike in tour mode while pulling the trailer and it seemed to work just fine. Now I was pulling the trailer without the safety chains because the safety chains I had on the trailer previously were not long enough to reach the mounting points on this new Rivco trailer hitch. Um, so I bought some new chain at Ace Hardware. I was able to find the little hooks that I need. I was able to find those at Lowe's actually. So I'll probably do a little short video on how to connect up the safety chains and do all that. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm working on a trailering tips video, so I'll just include that as part of the trailering tips video. But a lot of you commented on my video on how to install the Rivco trailer hitch. I've had a lot of people email me and call me, and I'm sorry, uh, put comments in about this Rivco trailer hitch. And a couple of you have said that, you know, that really bothers you that you have to grind off the nuts on the tip over bars. And, you know, it, when I first read that you had to do that, I was a little disappointed myself. But turns out they're really not that hard to get off. You could use a hacksaw, you could use a cutting wheel, you could use a grinder, whatever. I used a grinder because my cutting wheel wasn't working. But it's really not that big of a deal. And Rivco engineered this trailer hitch extremely well so that it mounts to the main frame of the bike. Now there's some other trailer hitches out there that you can buy that don't require cutting off the nuts on the tip over bars. In fact, there might even they might not even require that you remove the tip over bars. But some of these trailer hitches that I've seen are mounting to the subframe, not the main frame. And that subframe is thin tubular steel and it is not designed to really withstand the, the forces that pulling a trailer could put on your motorcycle. Now I'm not gonna pick out any particular brand and tell you not to buy it. All I can tell you is I have the Rivco hitch because, and I'm glad I do because I was very impressed with the engineering and how it installed and how it's the rigidity of the uh, well, let me get this Jeep go by with his noisy tires all I can tell you is I'm pretty convinced that the Rivco trailer hitch is engineered and manufactured just about as well as you could expect a hitch to be for a 2018 Goldwing I'm not going to say anything bad about anybody else's trailer hitch because I'm not familiar with them. It wouldn't be right for me to talk about them. I'm sure there's other ones out there that are just fine. But I know this one's solid as a rock. I know that all the mounting points are to the frame itself, not to the subframe. And that's the only thing I would caution you is mounting anything to that subframe because it's just not very strong. That's that's what your saddlebags and your trunk mount to and they're really it's really just not designed to handle that much weight or that much stress so that's all I'm gonna say I got the uh, wiring harness for the bush tech all wired up to the universal isolator on the the Rivco universal isolator I have a six wire set up on the bush tech and the universal isolator is only five wires and really the sixth wire is just for accessories so like an inside LED light or something like that so it's no big deal I can run a separate wire for that if I need to but it works all the electronics work it all plugged together good everything's looking good it's working good trailer pulls good and uh, I'll get my chains all hooked up we'll be good to go so let me tell you what's coming up on cruise man's garage YouTube channel this next week 
I am going to be finally taking my first road trip to West Texas. It'll be about a 350 mile ride. And it's gonna give me an opportunity to test out the gas mileage on this bike on a uh, long trip. So I'll be able to find out for sure how this bike compares to my 2012 as far as highway mileage. So I'm excited about that. I'm gonna leave pretty early in the morning while it's cool. Usually the crossed winds don't start really picking up until I get to about Abilene and then it starts getting kind of brutal out in West Texas. I'll usually hit 25 to 35 mile an hour crosswinds coming out of the south. And a couple of you have asked me questions about how this 2018 handles crosswinds. And uh, that'll be a good test. I'll be able to tell you for sure after that ride. But I'm going to be doing a moto vlog from the highway on that ride. So uh, stay tuned for more moto vlogs. Uh, hopefully I can post them while I'm in West Texas. I'm not sure if I'll have all my editing stuff with me, but I do take my laptop with me. So maybe I can do a little quick editing and get some stuff out for you. There's a question that some of you have asked me uh, for quite some time, and I just keep forgetting to respond to it. And it is, why did I buy this 2018 Goldwing from Shawnee Honda in Oklahoma when we have several dealers here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? Well, it's a very good question, and I have a very simple answer. Uh, they made me a great deal. I mean, it's a probably close to a 300-mile drive to get to Shawnee, Oklahoma from Dallas. But this is the second bike I've bought from them. I bought both of them from the same person. I bought from Jason Smith, who's their sales manager. And um, all the uh, negotiating and price and everything was done over email. I got, you know, an out-the-door price. And uh, it was better than the price I got in Dallas-Fort Worth. And I, when I shopped for my 2012, I went to every dealer in Dallas-Fort Worth and I couldn't get anybody to even deal with me. I mean, they were very difficult to deal with. Now, I do have a good dealer here for service. I have a great service rep, a great uh, tech that's been working on Gold Wings for 20 years. But when it comes to sales and purchasing a Gold Wing, my last two bikes I bought from Shawnee Honda. Uh, they're nice people. There's no hard sell. There's no pressure to buy extended warranties or anything like that. You know, they'll you make your deal and you go pick up your bike and you ride it home. So I think if you live within 500 miles of Shawnee, Oklahoma, you should at least uh, consider them as an option. Now I know some of you are real sticklers about buying local. And uh, you think it's going to affect the service of your bike, but I can tell you it won't. Uh, I get great service at Maxim Honda, no matter where I bought the bike. And um, you know they get the they get paid the same either way from Honda for warranty work. So you don't necessarily have to purchase a bike from the dealer where you get your service work done. So anyway, until next time, this is Cruise Man signing off. Thanks again for joining us. Make sure to subscribe down below and uh, share these videos with your friends or share them on your own Facebook page or wherever you want. Just spread them around. The more people, the better. Thanks again. We'll see you next time on Cruise Man's Garage.